Hello everyone, welcome to the 48th episode of The Ruins of Warsaw. I'm Alexandra and I'm the storyteller. Hi, I'm Dolores and I'm playing Janina of Clan Bruja. Hi, my name is Faye and I'm playing Beatrice Dvozniak of Clan Malkavian. And as always, partner is there in the chat, acting as Keeper of the Elysium and helping us with tech. Uh, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And thank you all so much for joining us for another episode in the story of Hindred in post-Second World War Warsaw. Uh, we had a bit of a change of schedule. Um, so we will be playing this week and then next week, and then hopefully we'll be back to regular schedule every two weeks. Um, and I think with that, um, let's do a quick recap of what happened uh, when we last played. So we began session uh, with Bea going to see um, Antoni, the um, Ventro Hound, and on the way, walking past a woman she recognized as somewhat familiar uh, but couldn't quite place who looked sad and upset but didn't want to get into the details. Bea then spent some time with Antoni who informed her that he was back to his duties and she in turn informed him that she recently encountered a member of Sabat uh, to which he understandably reacted with a bit of Concern, but Bea assured him that it's all right and she wants to handle this matter herself. Uh, meanwhile, Yanina was relaxing in her room when Nastya, her girlfriend, came back and at first wanted to kiss and make out and then started crying, visibly really upset. Um, she couldn't remember what happened, uh, she said she was going back from Zygmunt's place and went to feed on the way uh, and then started feeling really scared and strange. Um, and Yanina consoled her as much as she could. And when Bea came back, however, she had a disturbing vision of darkness surrounding Nastya and pulling into her. Um, the next night, Bea shared that vision with Yanina and with Nastya, and the trio was understandably concerned about this strange vision that Nastya seems to well, that seemed to be tied to Nastya in some way. Um, Bea and Nastya spent some time putting all those visions together, uh, but couldn't arrive at any further conclusion than uh, darkness is tied to Sabbat. And it is after Zygmunt Ray, the Bruja Primogen, and Nastya, who seems to be interested in them. At least. Um, Daniel, Yanina's sire, uh, visited his child and they talked briefly uh, about his worry for her and the guilt he feels for embracing her and causing her life to become so much more dangerous and difficult in this way. Um, Daniel also wanted to um, speak about Bess. Um, offer to speak to Zoya, the Bruja, um, to dissuade Zoya from pursuing an Asamite linked to Sabat, who killed her child, uh, an endeavor in which Yanina volunteered to take part, um, despite Daniel doing his best to. Um, Tell her not to do it. And after Yanina and Nastya left to visit the Bruja Primogen, Daniel spoke a bit more with Bea, asking her to, if she can't persuade Nastya to abandon the whole escapade, 
to not take in, you know, with her. Oh. And but I agree. I uh, that approach without telling Yanina. Um, after which she also had to leave for a meeting. Um, the her meeting with the venture primogen. Um, she walked to his place and when he arrived, she caught three other primogen Mihail Orwolf leaving, but they only briefly exchanged pleasantries. After which Bea spoke to her patron, the venture primogen, Stanisław Lubomirski, um, who inquired about her readiness to participate in the, the task involving using Arek, uh, Bea's former cottery mate, uh, now a member of Sabbat, uh, using him to lure some of the Sabbat uh, and to kill them, basing it all on the information he provided during interrogation. Um, Bea had some misgivings brought by her supernatural gifts that she shared with the primogen immediately, but in the end decided to um, pursue this endeavor. She was advised to make contact with Sabat and um, as one option of a course of action um, was given suggestion to pretend um, that she feels guilty for what happened to Arak uh, and then deliver information on when he was going to be left for the sun in order for Sabat to show up to try to rescue him. She also suggested um, that she might be able to persuade Zoya to participate in this. Um, and while Venture Primogen didn't necessarily look convinced that that will succeed, he said that if Bea can make this happen, that of course will be a great advantage. Um, after which Bea left to return to the Elysium. Meanwhile, Yenina went with Nastya to see their Primogen, Zygmunt Ray, um, at his house where they explained their fears associated with Bea's visions, um, which Sigmund treated seriously, although he emphasized the necessity to not succumb to fear and not to abandon other endeavors because of it. However, uh, concerned about Nastya, he suggested that she can spend more time with him so that if something happens, he would be able to protect her. Um, he also spoke with Yanina about her task, emphasizing um, its importance not just for practical matters, but for his much greater ideals and vision of a time and society where kindred wouldn't have to prey on mortals anymore and could live in harmony with them, uh, drinking solely the blood that came from the deceased. And Yanina, reassured that Nastya was in a safe place and uh, inspired by this vision, feeling happy she could contribute to something so important, left, um, making her way towards hospital, where her almost ghoul, the woman she rescued from the um is currently hospitalized. And that's where we end it. But we will start with Bea. Bea, you're approaching. Bristol, you were thinking about calling Felicia as you get there. Um, you, it wasn't a very long walk from place of the venture primogen, um, although there is quite a lot of snow now in the streets, which makes walking much slower. 
But you're now approaching the hotel. What are your plans? What do you want to do when you get there? Um, I'll place a call back to um, my name Nina's Haven to see whether my mother is there. And other than that, if she's not around, then I'll head to Elysium proper mm-hmm. and just start pulling together some of my notes and think about next steps. <clears throat> All right. So you um, enter the hotel lobby uh, and go towards the reception. You're directed to the telephone that you know you can use. Mm-hmm. You find the number for your haven in your journal and struggling with a telephone, but I assume less than previously. Slowly um, getting there. <laughs> slowly getting there. You make a call. And you wait a few signals, but then uh, someone picks up and you hear your mother's voice. Uh, hello? Oh, mother, it's me. I just wanted to check in. Oh, Bea, my dear. Oh, I'm so glad to hear from you. I was so worried. I'm sorry, mother. I have been a bit worried about you. Oh, oh I'm all right. I... I'm sorry I missed you. I found you a note. I was waiting for you to... Well, you said you would stop by. I was waiting for you to stop by later. But you didn't... I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mother. Uh, Is everything all right? Everything's fine. I must have just gotten muddled. and I'm sorry. I'll I'll drop by shortly then. How are you feeling, Bear? Um, frustrated at my own forgetfulness. Um, there's also a little part of me that is almost a, somewhat afraid of Felicia. I can't quite put my finger on why. There's just there's a sort of uncertainty on how to engage with her and an uncertainty in our relationship but I want I want her to be happy with me I want her to I don't want her to worry I don't want her to resent me so I will I'll do whatever I can to try and make things easier and you hear Felicia continuing to talk. I... Well, I, I miss you. Oh, my dear, I... Uh, where are you? Is everything all right? Is there anything you need? Everything's fine, Mother. I'm just... I, I'm at the hotel. Um... Oh, good. Hotel is... Well, should be safe now, I suppose. Yes, um... And I pause for a moment, not entirely sure what to say. Do you want me to drop by? Why? I miss you. If you... If you could... I'll drop by. It would be great to see you, dear. I... Well... You know, I... I like to make sure you're okay. Yes, Mother, I'm... I'm sorry. I'll I'll be there shortly. And with some goodbyes, I'll hang up. Well, I'll see you soon then. Yes, mother. I'll see you soon. I'm putting the phone back on the hook. Um, I turn back around and head out, <laughs> back into the snow. So you. Head back out. Uh, roll your before you head out. Uh, roll your perception and awareness with difficulty um, five. Okay.
um, would either insightful or hidden pain. Sorry, not hidden pain. Uh, some, I'm presuming. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> I have two tens. <laughs> what I'm all right, I don't say. think it would. That's fine. <laughs> um, and uh, so that's five successes. Five successes. So yeah, no problem at all. You, you don't even realize you're using your much more sensitive senses first. You do see Rahela standing near uh, the entrance to the cafe, um, leaning against the wall, um, looking towards someone who is a musician playing the piano, uh, playing a fairly upbeat melody. Um, And she glances towards you a couple of times and you see there are red tears on her cheeks. And at first you don't realize, only after a moment you realize she is obfuscated. Okay. Would it be possible for me to find a corner to also be obfuscated and go stand next to her so that she's not alone, but I'm not obviously standing there to any onlookers. <laughs> mm, I mean, you could. Like, if you stand there for a moment, it wouldn't really... There are people kind of yeah. loitering about, waiting okay. for somebody. It wouldn't be strange if you just want to stand there for a okay. moment. Okay. Um, in which case, I'll, I'll just go and look as though I'm watching the musician as well. And I'll go stand next to Rahel. Um, and in one hand... Um, I've got my arms folded, and in the hand that's closest to Rahela, there's a handkerchief if she does wish to take it. Um, it's it's just sat there, yeah. just as long as I'm there. She looks to you and gives you a slight smile. And then she takes it and uh, uses it to wipe her tears. Um, mm. And her eyes go back. To the pianist in the cafe. I also take a moment to watch the pianist. Um, there's some relief in seeing the people in the cafe, although I'm a bit worried about what's upset Rahela. I can't quite think of what it might be at this moment. Um, I know there's something. It, there's, there's something sort of at the back of my thoughts, but I can't quite pick up on it right this moment. After a moment, the pianist um, finishes playing, and Hella wipes another te- a few tears, and you feel like you see her reach for you. It was like she wanted to take your hand. Okay. I'll roll self-control and see whether I can take her hand. I'd be difficult to seven. I have one success. Um, you can. Yeah. Okay. Um, in which case I take her hand and just stand there with her. Oh, oh she takes your hand and she wants to pull you somewhere a bit okay. further away from the cafe. Okay, I'll follow. So you follow her. Meanwhile, Yanina, um, you're walking from Zygmunt's place towards the hospital where Hanna, a woman you spoke to last time you visited, um, introducing yourself as a friend, an acquaintance from her home village. She's there. You get to the hospital without many problems. It takes you. Um, it's a bit of a walk, especially in the snow lying along the streets. Mm. But you can get inside. You've been here before. You introduced yourself as a medical student. Um, so you could e- easily get in there. Unless there's something you wish to do on the way. Mm. or oh, I don't think I um, I'm fairly fat, so I guess I'm not going to do anything else. 
Um, so do you head to the world where Hanana is? Yes, that's that's probably the only thing that I will do in this hospital, so yes. Um, so you walk through the hospital, you know the way by now. Um, it's the middle of the night, so it is quite empty here, of course. Some lights are still on, um, but all the sounds just echo across the corridors. You hear your footsteps echoing somebody else's footsteps in other places in the hospital, somebody coughing in one of the words, some people snoring. Um, and you get to um, the word where Hanna Novak is. And you open the door and step inside. Um, you see that uh, most women of this word appear to be sleeping, one in the corner, uh, well, not in the corner, but kind of further away, uh, but in the bed parallel to Hannah's. Um, you can hear her softly crying. Okay. Is Hannah Hanna, sleeping? She is. Okay. Is the crying uh, woman... Did she notice me, or is she like mm. consumed with her own? <laughs> um, are you trying to be particularly stealthy? Oh, I probably I'm not. I'm I'm trying uh, to be like silent to not wake them up, but not like to be stealthy, just to not make noise to wake them up because I want to be considered like they're sleeping. She doesn't move to look at you. Okay. She. If she heard you, she probably doesn't care. Okay. Well, in that case, I will go straight to Hannah's bed, and I, if I see that she's sleeping, I will stroke her hair. So as and... you do that, she opens her eyes. Hey. And there's something very alert in her eyes the moment she opens them. I'm as probably... she notices you. I'm probably like start, startled a bit because I thought she was asleep, but and I s- smiled at her once. The shock of her be- awoken, being passed, and I will smile at her. Oh, it's you. Yeah, so- sorry, I didn't mean to wake you up. I was just nearby, so. I don't mind. And she kind of tries to pull herself up a little bit, sort of glancing around, but she also notices just this one woman crying and everyone else sleeping. It's good to see you. You're yes. like... I... I think I was dreaming you were here. <laughs> I'm sorry, that sounds very strange, but... No, it, it's not. I guess you you see me a lot these days, so it's understandable. Are you doing better? I am. I. Uh, what perception and empathy? Difficulty six. Okay. Uh, one success. So you see both that she's very eager to tell you something, and at the same time she's kind of ashamed as well of something. We're friends. You know you can talk to me, Hannah. Well, I... I... I mean, I'm... I still don't remember you. That's... I know we were close. I I know we must have been. It's all right. That can happen. But I remember everything. I think I remember everything else. Is there more I don't remember? I wish. I wish I could tell you. I just take it one one day at a time. I'm sure you will remember everything sooner or, or later. I... You need to recover first. I say so. I. 
I mean, I was going to tell you. I And you see her now looking more eager. The doctors, they're saying I, I might walk again. That's amazing. They say yes. I'm, I'm recovering really well. I... I can't believe it. I guess that God must have heard my prayers. I've been praying so much. I guess it must have been. So that's that's such good news. I'm so happy. I am feeling. I'm feeling so much better. Only I can't remember you, and I. And I feel so bad. I'm sorry. I'm no, really, no, no. really sorry. And you see, that the, like, she kind of grabs your hand and is very apologetic, almost like bowing I slightly. Like, I will like lean and put her, pull her into a hug and just tell her it's all right it doesn't matter if you ever don't remember me we can make new memories it's all right don't don't worry about it you have a new I life i want to remember you i'm Nina. roll your charisma and subterfuge with difficulty five uh, two successes, eight and five. Um, right. Uh, so yeah, she, she doesn't. She, she's just, uh, very apologetic about not remembering. Uh, she doesn't seem to, like, be suspicious of anything at all. Ah, uh, it's alright. Take your time, just one step at a time. Now you have to recover and get out of this hospital. Well, I, I, I think it might be a bit of time, but I'm so... I can't believe it. I was sure everyone was saying I'm, I'm not going to walk again, and now... I guess miracles oh. do happen. Oh my God. And, and she makes a like, sign of a cross and whispers a little prayer in thanks. I just slightly look at sideways how are feel... you feeling here Nina? well i'm very happy about the fact that she will probably walk again so that makes me really happy and but i feel unease not about lying to her about her being her friend but about that she thinks it's a miracle and she seems so so happy about it and i feel I feel bad. I really want to tell her the truth, but I want to wait until she's fully ghouled and out of the hospital, <laughs> somewhere where we could like talk private. But I, I'm that sure that I will tell her the truth because I want to. Uh, I want to tell her everything, but right now I try to concentrate on her getting better. All right, uh, and she keeps like saying how miraculous it is and then she is very focused on you you see her eyes just search for you um all her attention focused on your presence well i will probably like sit next to her and maybe chat with her a bit about the hospital life and just like some small talk she tells you about the hospital. She, um, I mean, she, she seems kind of like she doesn't really care much, but when you ask, she is very eager to, to share with you anything you ask about. So she tells you about other women from this world. Um, that they I probably, all... I will probably ask about the crying woman, like slightly whispering and like nodding. If she knows what's wrong with her. Oh, uh, her, um, she, I think she's afraid to come back home. Why? Well, you know how it is sometimes with men. Yeah, there are also a lot of about men. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know enough to know. Yeah. Well, I guess I know what's like yeah. from friends and stuff. Yeah. Um, she she's getting out soon. They they need space for other patients. I think she's afraid. 
نفسي is be hard I hope it's gonna be alright for her I hope so she's she's very kind I I'm sorry I Don't, don't stop apologizing. You have nothing to be sorry for. You've been so good to me, and I... I don't even remember what you've called. <laughs> and you see she's, like, about to start crying. Don't cry. We, we must have been... Like, I don't remember your name. I'm Yanina. I, I guess I... I think I, I told her my real name. No, you didn't before. I didn't? Okay. Then you didn't, I didn't before. Did I tell her any name? or No, I didn't. no, you didn't. Okay, in case I will probably give her my medical license name. Okay. Anna or I Anna, yeah. yeah. I'm Anna. I'm sure you will remember me. Hey. And you see that she starts crying. Just kind of wanting to lean on you. And then, well, you got, I'm sorry, I don't want to be a burden. I'm so sorry. You're not a burden, you're my friend. I want you to get better. You're going to walk again. You'll make new memories. Hope so. Of course. I I must be. Such a terrible friend. Huh, you're not. If you were, I wouldn't be here, wouldn't I? I guess. And she kind of leans towards you. And I will hug her mm. and cradle her for a moment and uh, ask her, aren't you tired? Do you want to go to bed? I... It's late. I'm sorry I keep visiting late, but I'm working, so... I mean, I, I feel quite... Awake now that you're here, I... I wouldn't want to miss our interactions. Oh, don't worry. You're not missing anything. I will be heading out soon anyway. Do you have to go? Already? Can't you stay longer? I can stay for a bit longer. I want to let you go to bed and then I will go. Oh, roll charisma and persuade. Difficulty five. Uh, two, eight, Good. and nine. Uh, so she almost like she looks like she wants to protest for when again to ask you to stay, but then she, if uh, yes, I, I don't want to trouble you. Of course, you must be so tired. Uh, and she lies down. Should probably get some rest. I will probably start telling her some, like, I don't know, story that I know from my time when I was, like, sick as a child. There's something to help her fall asleep, because I want to give her my blood once she falls asleep, so I'm waiting. Um, So you talk to her, and she... Quite quickly, she must have been more tired than she admitted. Uh, drifts off to sleep. Okay. Once she's asleep, and I'm sure that she sleeps, then I will uh, slightly bite into my wrist and put it into her mouth. So I gave her a bit more of my blood. Um, and some of... Actually, I haven't done that before, but uh, spend one blood point on this. Yeah. <laughs> you just want me to go feed again and make a disaster. Yes. Um, so, I forgot about that before. But should, should be that. So you start pouring your blood into her mouth and at first dripping a bit her lips and then she starts instinctively swallowing it Um, and tastes your Vita for the third time which you know completes her bond to her to you (laughs) Mm. 
Uh, and she's sleeping. Okay, I will wipe her mouth from if there is like any blood left and lick my wrist. And you see, fuck her in the bed. You see her smile as you do that through her sleep. <laughs> I will kiss her on the forehead, tuck her in the bed, and leave. Probably glancing towards the crying woman again. Just. Oh. The woman doesn't look up. <laughs> but she is crying. Um, and you leave. What's running through your head as you're leaving the hospital? Oh, well. I have mixed, mixed emotions about Hannah because I really want, I want to be her friend. And I want to tell her the truth and I hope that despite her being a ghoul, that she still can. I don't know. I want to make her safe and be as independent of me as she can be. I, I don't know. I just, I never had a ghoul before. Well, the one that I, Plans to have. You tried <laughs> it to have a ghoul. Yeah, before. I tried, but it didn't went well. So I hope this time it's gonna be better. I'm more mature, and we'll see. <laughs> so I guess it's mix of emotions, but I feel really I care about Hannah, even though I I'm not really her friend. I do care. I feel responsibility for her. So I guess in a way it almost feels like. This has to feel like when you make a child, that, or like a real one, or even like a kindred one. So I feel a lot of responsibility for her. <coughs> and you're thinking all that uh, as you leave the hospital. What do you want to do next? Where do you uh, want to head? I'm not sure. Do I have to go to the hospital, to the my working hospital, or was I? Well, I'm not sure. I think you. My my plans were. (laughs) I think you. um, I mean, you were planning to go there at some point. You you need to make some arrangements. You got some like blood out of the bodies and. Oh yeah, okay. I think I wanted to go there as well. It is quite late. I mean, you could go there if you want to. Okay, if it's depends if Mm -hmm. I can go there and work there for a bit and then make it back to the hotel. Yeah, you can do that. You have time to do that. It's okay, just... in that case, I will do that. Yeah, all right. Then you start heading towards another I hospital. Can... Um, where you have your lab for your research that you're doing for your primogen. Meanwhile, Bea, Rahela, uh, leads you uh, by your hand. Um, not very far, just not going up any stairs, just round the corridor, round another corridor, um, and then um, drops her obfuscate in um, not necessarily a hidden place as such, but just a bit out of the way in the corridors on this level of the hotel. Um, and gives you a slight smile. Thank you. And she hands you back the handkerchief. Like I can wash it first if you'd like. It's <laughs> it's it's no it's no matter. Don't worry about it. Are you? I suppose a bit silly to ask if you're all right. I. Well, I'm not, but I. I am in a way, it's just, it's difficult, but I'm all right, if that makes sense. I think so. I wanted to find you and thank you. I, I spoke to the prince and thank you for helping me. Prepare for that. Of course. I'm glad I could be of help. I really appreciated it. 
she... Well, it's not like I necessarily changed her mind, but she said she was thinking about Elisa, and I think... I think I might be able to speak with her soon. And something... She was kind to me. She thanked me for expressing my view, and I... Well, of course I want this, but... And I want Elisa to be able to interact with me. I'm sorry, I'm babbling. That's all right. I'm happy to listen. And... I'm glad that the prince listened. And I hope that Elisa will be able to talk to you soon. And if there's anything else I can do to help, just let me know. She smiles, and then she kind of not looks at you, looks for a moment just into the distance, and says, it's so strange, she... The prince, she... The way she was, it's as if nothing happened. As if... Or as if maybe not that nothing happened, but as if it didn't matter that when we first met she wanted me dead. As if it doesn't matter that she had my sire executed. As if... All of that was as if it was not relevant to us talking. I think to some individuals it almost isn't and It's an uncomfortable realization. I'm sorry. That's perception and empathy. Difficulty six. Yeah, no, no, that's um, zero successes. Okay, so just continue. You don't really see much on her face. But that sounds like... That sounds... difficult. That doesn't really do it justice. But... (laughs) It is difficult, but... I don't know if I like it, but I think it may be... Maybe I need to move on from it. Maybe that's the way to be. If we are to survive. I think that Having feelings about the situation isn't necessarily wrong, so long as we don't let them consume us. Easier said than done. (laughs) They can be so all-consuming. I was talking to her and she kind of glances around. Part of me wanted to see her dead. But I'm used to not being able to have revenge. Revenge. Well, from my experience, it doesn't always feel like it should. But I understand the 
wanting to be able to do something about it and perhaps feeling powerless. I know I could never kill her. And I know if I tried, it would do nothing. I'm not an idiot. I wasn't saying you were. I know. It's just... It's difficult to move on. That's all. But I'm glad I've done it. I'm glad I spoke to her. I'm glad you were able to. And well done for putting on the polite face. It's it's not easy, so you did you did very well to be able to get through that. Thanks. I I appreciate your help. Of course. And if you want to continue etiquette lessons. As exciting as they are. <laughs> I'd like that. Of course. Anything you can teach me to help me, I, I'd like that. I'll see what I can think up. Um, Thank you. And then I glance to the door knowing that I do need to leave. But it's, it'll have to be another night, I'm afraid. Oh, oh of course. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to keep you. That's all right. The snow will keep me plenty anyway. <laughs> well, be careful out there. I'll stay hidden. And do you take care? You too. I give her a warm smile and then head out. And she smiles at you as well. And then leans against the wall of the corridor and stares into the distance some more. Uh, and you leave Hotel Bristol, um, heading out and heading towards your haven, located on the other side of the Vistula River. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking about on the way? What are you feeling? Um, there's this... There's still this sort of bone deep tiredness that's just permeating through me. And I'm thinking about how difficult it must have been for Rahela to look to the face of someone who's almost nearly executed her before and has executed someone she cared for. Um, there's a part of me that's the slightly more pragmatic part that looks at it with the well, it could have been worse. The prince could still have murder on her mind. Um, but so I suppose there's a bit of relief that the prince is not focusing on that, but I understand how confusing and upsetting that must feel for her. Um, but ultimately, my thoughts keep going back to Felicia, and that I need to be near her. And you walk across the Poniatowski Bridge and to the district where your haven is located. Mm -hmm. um, Yanina. Uh, you get to the hospital um, after quite a bit of a walk. You have some time to spend here. It's it is the second half of the night now, so you can't stay for very long, but you can definitely check on all your samples. Yes, I'm going to go check on the work that I have here and do some, I guess, tests on the blood samples that there already are. 
Um, so, um, you are uh, checking the blood that you stored. There is um, more blood stored there now since you ext- extracted uh, what you could from the bodies. Um, and it is holding the solution that you used is preserving the blood, um, the one in the jars. Um, there isn't a lot there, but there's definitely enough to feed if you were so inclined. Yeah, I wanted to, maybe if there's like one of the oldest uh, blood samples. Well, the oldest samples are just kind of test. It's a very small sample. Yeah. So that won't really be very nourishing. And you would want to know that you want to keep like your first samples too to see how long they last. Okay. Um, but as you're testing all of them, you do see, um, that generally the solution is preserving the blood okay. You see that your oldest sample is beginning to decline in, in quality. Uh, it's been, like, it's held for about a week, which is good, but you feel like for now this may be the limit you can have. Okay. I will probably taste one of the samples. Um, so you test this old sample. It tastes, it's not as, Good as when you feed directly from a person. It's cold, but it's still uh, nourishing. And still, as you taste blood, something in you, all your nerves are calling for more. And you feel your wounds more in this moment. bit of pain, the discomfort as your body is calling for nourishment to heal itself. Yeah. I made a mental note to myself that if on the way back I will be able to locate someone to feed on, that I should try to heal a bit. So do you want to feed from the blood that is Yes. Here, because you have like quite a bit, um, so you can easily. This will I... deplete your reserves, but this is already still preserved, so it's not like you can do much more with it except see how long it will last. Yeah, I will probably try to t- test. You know, it's science. I have to test <laughs> and taste, the- <laughs> taste it. <laughs> So how, see, how much do you want to drink from there? I would just like one blood point. Okay. Yeah, you can do that, no problem. And there will be still like some last for some people to feed, or for you if you wanted to feed later. No, I just I just wanted like to taste. I guess for reference, I would say you have about four, five blood points in there. Okay. All right. I'm. Not, I don't want to deplete like until I just yeah. wanted to feed and also test it in the way how it even tastes. So as you start drinking, it's like it's slightly different and it's cold, but it is just as nourishing. It feels it, it tastes tea. good. <laughs> it tastes it tastes good and um you don't quite forget that it is a bit different, but you feel like if you were hungrier you could. Okay. Well, that's good. So it's it's drinkable. That is good news. So I guess I will work more, and then once I'm done with everything that I can, and have still have reasonable time to get back to the hotel, I will slowly pack everything and head back. And I will try to feed on my way back if I see. I've got an opportunity. All right. So you pack up everything and you 
head out of the hospital eventually. You're so good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and roll your wit and alertness with difficulty seven. Uh, no, yeah, you know, it doesn't seem. I have no success. <laughs> so you try to look to find someone, feed, but you feel like you could exactly the hour that is a bit too late for people to just hang around and too early for them to be on their way to work yet. Um, so it's, it's this in between time that streets are fairly empty and you can't really see anyone. And when there is someone, it's like a group of people. In that case, I will just give up and go to the hotel. But you get a blood point from the blood yeah. from the yes. blood. Um, and you head back to the hotel. Meanwhile, Bea, um, you get to your haven. You have a key. Um, and as you are walking upstairs, the door to the flat opens and you see Felicia standing there. Uh, with a smile on her face. Um, Good evening, Mother. I'm sorry I took a while. <laughs> I say brushing snow off of me, I presume. <laughs> oh. oh, good evening. Good evening, my dear. And she kind of comes up to you and helps you brush off some of the snow. Okay. Uh, roll your self-control with difficulty five. Yeah. <laughs> uh, whole one success. I'm um, just hanging on. <laughs> You're hanging on, but she, she continues. Oh, the weather is, is, has been so difficult to move around. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to see you. Come on in, come on in. And she ushers you into the flat and closes the door and locks it. What have you been up to? Oh. Uh, not much, really. I was trying to find some more things for this place to decorate it a little bit, but well, with all the snow, it's more difficult to search through the buildings and oh, well, I might might be able to buy some more things soon. I wanted to feel more homely. Well, you've already done a lovely job, so thank you so much. And she, she goes to the living room and um, sits um, with you on the sofa. So, I was so worried. How are you? How have you been? What? Last time we spoke, you were telling me about some trouble with your mortal family? Oh, goodness. Um... Yes, uh, that's um, uh, that's a problem that's grown arms and legs by the looks of it. But oh, um, not not in the direction I thought it was going to. So, um, uh, what? Maybe I can help somehow. What's going on? Tell me. Um, I sort of pull up my journal just to double check things because everything's starting to get a bit hazy around there. Um. Partially exacerbated by the tiredness. <sighs> well, I spoke to my contact that, um, and he said that uh, Mr. Vojniak had already been reunited with his wife, which was interesting. Um, oh. And it's bizarre. I looked into it further, and it would seem that one of the Sabbat is impersonating me. One of the Sabbat? Yes. Um, uh, little perception and empathy. Finally making up for all the terrible roles I had earlier. 
Okay. Um, that would be... Difficulty six. Five... Five successes. Yeah. Um, so you see as you say that, there is this interest that this pig, that she was before just kind of chatting with you, and now she's much, she becomes much more alert. Mm-hmm. Um, and much more tense, much more focused on you. Um, but tries not to show it on her face, although her eyes fixate on you. Um, and she... Was, oh, what, tell me what happened. What, what's going on? Do you Are you in danger, Bear? I don't know that I am directly. I don't know that I am, actually. Um, but I think he is. Um, and I'll explain the situation to her. Do you tell her everything? Um, would I need to roll to not? Um, not really at the moment. Okay. Um, I guess I give her like the general sort of overview. Um, I maybe don't tell her that I directly confronted Ermina. <laughs> um, but do you tell her that she's there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But don't tell you spoke to her. Okay. <laughs> I feel like she might judge me a little bit for that one. Yeah. Um, so, um, as you were speaking to her, you because you rolled so well, you would have noticed that when she's just sort of saying, oh, tell me what happened, the kind of general overview, she seems less interested. She kind of does it because of the habit almost. Um... But there is some other tension and um, focus and interest underneath it. And you see, she seems interested in Ermina specifically. Okay. When you mention her. Was it... um, Sorry, brain. (laughs) Um, Don't worry, it's all right. (laughs) Take your time. Thank you. Um, the interest, was it Was it more in a sort of, are you in danger, you're not in danger, okay, I'm less interested now? Um, uh, no, no. No. It was specifically being interested in you and me now. Uh, okay. With that role, you pick up on that, no doubt. Okay. Uh, but she she kind of continues this conversation, asking you, like telling you, I'm I'm glad you were careful. Um, you have a feeling she doesn't like particularly even tries to probe. Like she does maybe doesn't occur to her that you were actually doing something more dangerous. Maybe she doesn't really care about that aspect of the conversation. Okay. Uh, but she asks, uh, so. This girl, what was she? Would you like me to go and try to learn more about what she wants, take a look at the situation? I can help with that. Thank you, Mother, but it's all right. I think it's something I need to deal with myself. And I'm watching her quite closely at this point. She does look disappointed in this a little bit. Mm. Could I activate Eyes of Chaos in terms of Mother's interest in Armina? Um, yes. Roll Perception and Occult Difficulty 8.
Uh, three successes. Three successes. So you see, again, you're looking at Felicia, you try to focus on her interest, focus on what, what's there. And again, you see this whirlwind of thoughts um, in, in her, almost see it in her head, see it in her heart, see it enveloping her whole body. Uh, the lightnings of thoughts and emotions running through her nerves. And you see it all swirling and mixing and moving very, very fast around something, something dark something obscured at the center that pulls it all in. You see the thoughts gravitating there. You see the feeling gravitating there. And you see from those thoughts, from those emotions, uh, a hand reaching out in that direction. And you see Irmina's hand reaching back. Okay. <laughs> There's this sort of seeping dread and this creeping feeling of jealousy. Um, and also a fair amount of fear. Do you want to hide what you're feeling, or that's yes. what disturbs? Yes. Hold self self control and subterfuge. Difficulty six. I have three successes. Um, she doesn't seem to react to this. She just continues well. If you don't want me to, I won't. Well, I can at least go there and help keep him safe. But you see that she is interested in Romina primarily. She's not necessarily lying that she would keep uh, your husband say it's not like she is not telling the truth, but it's not her primary interest. I think at this point I'm I, I sort of freeze for a moment because I. I I, there's a moment where I almost don't know where, what to do with this, and there's just this bubbling build of emotion in my chest. Um, I feel like I feel like your focus is more on her than on anything else. She looks a bit surprised and then smiles. Oh. You saw so right through me there. I'm sorry. I'm just... Obey, my dear. And you see that she is... She doesn't like it on some level that you pointed that out. But she is trying to now sort of uh, get out of it and make mm. peace with you. <laughs> I am... Well... I'm not going to lie to you. I've been interested in her since... Since we met her when Estera died. But it's nothing. <laughs> I suppose it's just a memory of my friend that pulls me there. <sighs> I 
Maybe I'm still trying to understand why. Why Estera did what she did. Do I feel like she's being entirely honest with me as she says that? You think she's not, she's honest, but there is something more there. Please be careful around her mother. Oh, I will. I will, my dear. She's... Oh. She's a troubled, troubled young woman. <sighs> and dangerous through that. I realise that. I just don't want you to get hurt. Oh, don't be silly. I'll be all right. I, I'll just have a look. I'll just... Well, I suppose in my old age I can allow myself to have a little bit of unhealthy anxiety. Isn't that what everyone says about the old ladies? And you see that she is joking and she is kind of laughing at herself. Uh, but there is something more there as well. More tension. I put on a smile as she makes a joke. And I'll let it drop for the moment. I'm sorry I upset you even more. Are you going to stay for the day? If that's all right. Of course, my dear. Do you want me to, well, help you get ready? Do you want to read some poetry together? Like we used to? I know we don't see each other that much, but I... I've missed you. I've missed you too, and I will always find time for you, Bea, my dear. Don't you think that it will change? It won't. I think at that point, it can. does my role from earlier self-control still stand? Yes, yes it would. I think at that point I sort of throw myself into her arms. And she hugs you. Oh, darling. Oh, darling. Oh. And I'm shaking. And I quietly murmur, I don't, I don't want to lose you. Oh, darling, you won't. I'll make sure of that. I don't want to lose you either. And And she's, I just cling to her. And she's hugging you. Um, Meanwhile, Yanina. Um, You are getting uh, to Hotel Bristol. Yes. It's fairly late now. There's still a bit of time, like you don't have to run or anything, but you feel like you don't really have that much time until dawn. Because I didn't manage to feed, I think I'm just going straight to the hotel. So you're going straight to the hotel, and as you enter, uh, are you heading towards your room? Yes, I will. Do I remember, did Bea mention that she is going to stay at Felicia's? No. Nope. She mentioned she was going to see the Venture Primogen. Okay. Uh, but you were meant to reunite at the hotel, presumably. Okay. I guess that first thing, I will go check her room, then Elysium, and then go to my room. But I guess right. if, if Bear's not, not going to be anywhere, I will probably go down and I will try to call the Haven because I'm worried. Okay, so what happens in order okay. as you're doing that procession through different places is that you get to Bear's room and she's not there. Okay. You head to Elysium. Have a glance around. She's not there. But you see Abelard there. Okay. And as you turn to walk towards 
um, your room, uh, you notice him um, step out of the Elysium, calling to you, Yanina. Okay, then I will stop in my tracks and turn around and wait for him to catch up with me. And he gets up with you, you see him, he is again wearing his uh, tired um, face, a bit older, um, wrinkled. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a human face, but skin isn't looking very healthy. Um, but he is dressed almost like in a theater costume in his, uh, embroidered with golden thread coats. Uh, and he walks up to you. Good evening. Good evening. I'm glad I managed to find you. I... Are, there, are there any news about Dominic? Yes and no. Well, the news is we are going to try to make a move. To get him out soon. Okay. Be ready. It of might course. be short notice. We're watching the place to find the moment to move. Right. So, so, try to be around. Okay, I will try to be around. Is it going to be tomorrow? It's... I don't think tomorrow unless... Well... I'm sorry for certain if the lady of the house decides to take a stroll or a... Ride tomorrow. We'll All right. Get there as fast as we can. I will try to hang out around the hotel and only go to feed. It's well. Just be alert. Okay. And be ready. Of course. Thank you. Time. I I wish I could give you more specific timings than that, but... I get it. It's not easy. I just hope we can get him out in one piece. As do I. I worry about him. So do I. But we will get him back. Yeah. We can let Slad have another one of ours. Sorry, what did you? I didn't hear that. Sorry, I <laughs> let me remember what I said. Yeah. I said um, that I don't want to Slad to have any mm. other of ours. <sighs> Well, I'm afraid they will in their time, but at least, Dominic, I want out of there. Yeah, but let's give it our best shot. It's better to try and fail than never try. Better fail, that's the spirit I'm hoping for. Thank you for giving a shit. Oh, of course. Of course I do. Dominic is a friend. You'll be surprised for how little that counts sometimes. Not in my world. Must be a better world. Wow. Well, perception and empathy. Difficulty six. Uh, one success. No, you don't really know what he's thinking. He just says, well, I will be heading to my place of rest for the day. Have a I just wanted to let you know we haven't forgotten and we will be moving soon. 
Good. I'm glad to hear that. The sooner we move, the better are Dominic's chances. Then let's hope it will be soon. Yes. I thank you again for letting me know. I, you can count on me. I will try to be around unless there's going to be some emergency, but I hope there won't be. Let's hope not. I'm going to go look for yeah. Bear. And you look for Bear after this conversation in the room. And she's not there either. Okay. And then you head to the reception. Yeah. And I oh. want to try, because I guess it's fairly late, so if she's not yeah. here, the only other place that I know that she would be safe is the Haven. Um, so you call the Haven, and as you're hugging Felicia, the phone is ringing. After a moment, I'll extricate myself <laughs> and go and answer. Hello? Hi. Oh, Bear, it's you. I'm just, I'm at the hotel and I was worried that you weren't here, so I oh, wanted goodness. to make sure. I'm sorry, I should have left a note. Uh, no, it's it's all right. I, I figure out that this is the only other place you can be. So I'm glad you're there. Is Felicia there? Yes. Is she all right? Yes. Are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm fine. Uh, how are you? Fine, I'm good. I just arrived back from the hospital and uh, yeah. I well, went to see Hannah and then back to my hospital to do some research and then I went home. Well, here. <laughs> and night full of hospitals. <laughs> yeah. How is Hannah getting along? She's doing well. I gave her the last third right. portion so I guess it's it's done I will check on her in a few days okay other than that nothing significant happened what about you oh um how it went with the, the primogen I'll I'll catch you up when we're Okay. In person, if oh, that's all course, right. Sure, it it's, it's late and <laughs> you must be tired. It's, it's been a long night. <laughs> I understand. I'm going to get to the room and get to sleep. Sleep well. You I too. hope to see you tomorrow. Fingers crossed. As long as we don't get snowed in. <laughs> okay. Say hi to Felicia. <laughs> Will do. Take care. Bye. Bye. You too. <laughs> And you, the phone. <laughs> yes. And you finish the conversation, Nina, and do you head to your room now? Yes, I guess because I was in the Elysium and uh, the only people I would be interested in are Nastya, which I know she's near Bea, she's near, and Daniel. So if... He's not uh, there. Yeah, right in now. that case, I will go back to my room because I'm also tired and... I know there's not going to be any drama right now, so yay. <laughs> there isn't any drama. And you lie down on the bed yeah. uh, without getting ready much, I presume. Yeah, I might maybe just think about, like, I miss Nastya because I like sleeping next to her. Or with Bea, so maybe I feel a bit lonely because I'm usually, there's always someone. But other than that, it's, it's fine. Do you think about what Zygmunt told you about his ideals? You saw your research seems to I guess everything. I, I think everything yeah. about the research about Nastya, like there's a lot of thoughts about everything that I learned today but you about Hannah, but I drift off. Mostly Miss Nastya yeah. and Bea. I like that. That's nice. And you fall asleep as the sun rises. And you, Bea, finish the conversation with Yanina. Yes. Um, and Felicia is there smiling at you. All right, are you ready to 
get ready for bed. Yes, Mother. Um, oh. y- Yanina says hi. <laughs> oh, I well, hope she's doing all right. <sighs> yes. Not getting into any trouble, I hope. Uh, sounds like it was a quiet night. <laughs> oh, always oh, good to hear that. You have good influence on her. Keep it up. <laughs> I'll do my best. And she helps you get ready for bed and asks you to brush her hair. I do so. Um, I take a lot. I, I take even more care than usual with her hair. And you finally lie uh, in bed and start falling asleep. And what's running through your mind as you're falling asleep near your sire? This urge to be close to her, this fear of her slipping away from me. Um, um, this fear of Ermina. Um... Also worry for Rahela. Um but mostly just this bone deep exhaustion. And you fall asleep. And I think that's a good moment for a break. Thank you so much for everyone who's been watching. We will be back in about fifteen minutes. Uh please stay with us to continue this story and we'll see you after the break. And welcome back. Uh, thank you so much for sticking with us after the break. And let's continue uh, with uh, the story of Bea and Yanina. <laughs> it is a new night. So you can regain one willpower and lose blood for the night. And Bea, you can also roll for nightmares. No, I don't. If you like watch, it. maybe it had to happen eventually. <laughs> All right. I well, I'm glad coast- I'm not there. Yeah, I've been coasting by the last several sessions with one and two willpower, so it had to happen eventually. All right. Well, we'll get to that. <laughs> um. We'll think, yeah. <laughs> um. But we will start. With Yanina, you are the first one to wake up. Okay, I guess I will sit up and I realize that I'm alone and there's like a bit of sadness because I don't like to be alone. So I miss having Bear, Nastya, or Daniel beside me, so I guess I sit up and just sit for a moment and then probably go to the window as usual do my usual check if the world still stands (laughs) it does indeed still stand it's it's not snowing at the moment, it has stopped for now, but you see the streets below and the roofs that still remain and the ruins that you see from the window covered in a thick layer of snow and people walking uh, along the street. You hear the murmur of conversations, some laughter, someone calling after somebody. You hear someone calling after a horse-drawn carriage uh, and jumping in as it stops. Okay, I will, after a moment, like a few minutes of just watching and uh, sorting my thoughts about uh, my plans today, I guess I'm gonna stay in the hotel. I guess I don't have any errands, so I will stay in the hotel and only go to feed. I will probably try to wait for Bea um, in case, uh, you know, it's better to go feed with someone, but if she doesn't come back in a few hours, then I will probably head, head out myself. But other than that, I guess I don't have any real plans. Yeah. 
you feel like you should be okay. Like you feel a bit hungry. You feel like you should be okay controlling yourself. Um, but you can absolutely wait for bell. Yes, and I will probably go to the bathroom and just check myself. Not doing any amazing preparations like there, but just you know, look at myself. If I look all right to pass as a human, and you look all right. You, I mean, your clothes—they're not really dirty as such. If you don't sweat, they're just a bit like. Um, you've been wearing them for a long time, so there's some wrinkles. They're, they're kind of tired. Um, you probably have something to change into here. Yeah. I okay. In that case, I will change my guess the shirt and put the jacket back, and then I will head my clothes. Oh. Then I will head uh, towards the Elysium, I guess, to check if. Well, I'm sure Bao would, wouldn't be here. It's no, it's still so quite early. So um, I guess I'm going to check if there's like someone to catch up on. And if not, then I will probably... Hmm, what would I do? Well, I'll probably go back to my room and just read through some notes that I made and try okay. to make sense of them. But first, you go to the Elysium. Yeah. Um, so you had there. And it is still quite early, so as you get there, it is fairly empty. There's, um, you get like few people moving through, you think, their ghouls, um, who are rearranging some chairs, like, like, yeah, they've been cleaning the place and getting it ready. Um, and, um, you see, um, Nina, is there and um Diana is there. Okay. And they're sitting together and chatting and as you step in the door, uh Diana kind of looks to you. And, I them. <laughs> and she waves to you as well. She turns to uh Nina and says, Give me a moment, please. And Nina just smiles at her. Um and Diana comes up to you. Oh, how are you, Diana? You look much better now. Yes, I'm healing. That's good. I was looking for your friend Bea. She is in our other haven tonight, but she should be back tonight. Did she spend the night there? Uh, well, I... I'm not sure if I'll bump into her, but I... Do you want me to tell her to go see you? I see oh, her. Oh, 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 it's nothing that she just uh, <laughs> mess. That's fine. We have an almost new player. Yes, um, he's annoying as hell. <laughs> <laughs> um, Diana just says, um, "It's nothing big. I just..." Well, we passed each other in a corridor and I wasn't feeling very well. She was kind to me, but I, um, I just wanted to thank her again. Oh, of course. I, um, she's always looking out for people. I didn't. Are, are you doing better? I, ah. Uh, perception and empathy. Well, if Michael lets me, then I will. <laughs> He's guarding the dice. Okay. Uh, I have two tens, nine, and I guess six. I'm not sure if it was Difficulty six. Difficulty six, yes. Okay. Right. Because Michael touched the dice. So I'm yeah. not 100% sure it was no, six. No, it's just half of yeah. Um, so... <laughs> Um, you see that she is not all right, but okay. she doesn't like show it. Um, she just says, "There's nothing to be done, I suppose." Are you um, sure? 
if you want to talk about it. I, I know we are this close, but I'm here for you if you need to talk in private. I... Maybe some other time. Of course. Just know that I'm here for you. And you see that she is kind of anxious. Um, and she glances to Nina. And Nina kind of comes up uh, and says, Nina, hi. Hi. How are you? Doing all right, I suppose, under the circumstances. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you're both safe. And she turns to Diana. Dear, you don't have to. None of this is your fault. And Diana kind of looks to her and, and she looks like she doesn't quite believe it. Um, and then she kind of just shakes her head. I, I, I don't know what's going on between the two of you. Yeah. I don't want to cry, but if you ever want someone to talk to, I'm here for you. And I'm sure Bea would be as well. Thank you, Ms. Diana. You're very kind. I... She look, She kind of glances to me that I should probably get going. I, and, and she kind of pauses. She doesn't finish the thought. Like she catches herself because, for saying something she shouldn't. Um, and... Nina says, oh, you go, I'm sure your sire will be waiting for you. And Diana just gives a bit of a smile. Do I know who her sire is? is, is yes, me. the sheriff. Okay, right. Fine. Uh, I'm not sure because there are too many th- Doriaders. <laughs> there are quite a lot of Doriaders, but no, the sheriff yeah, is okay. her sire. Okay, sure. Fine. I wasn't sure. Okay. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, in that case, I will just let them go, go about their night and I will glance around and then leave, but to go back to my room. And you go back to your room to wait for Bea. Um, Bea. <laughs> to do doom doom. You are running the city, looking for people whose faces are fading from your memory. The ground shakes, there is smoke in the air, and f- fire fills the air from the burning building on both your sides. People around you are screaming, um, the noise ringing in your ears, mixing with the, bom- the sound of bombs that fall from the sky, and the Airplane engines above your head. You run past people trying to push your way against this current of people running away. Um, you keep going. Um, although the whole crowd wants to push you in the opposite direction and you stumble on the shaking ground, almost losing your way in the smoke. Um, You get glimpses of faces, but they all blend into each other. And you're looking, you're, you want to call a name, but the names disappear from your memory the moment you want to call them. Um, and then somewhere in the crowd, you see just a, you catch a part of the face of your mother and you, wants to run towards her. You're pushing through the crowd. You see um, her gray hair, her elegant clothes somewhere ahead of you. As you stumble towards her, you fall onto the ground. You start crawling, hurting your hands on the rubble. 
um, you feel the burning air in your lungs. You, you don't have to breathe, but you still feel like you're suffocating, going in high direction, and you see her in the distance, and then you catch a glimpse of red hair, and you see yourself with her, and she looks around, and your eyes meet her eyes, and she doesn't recognize you, moving away, turning towards the copy of you, as if she was speaking to you. And you shout towards her, but she doesn't appear to hear you. Um, you run up. Uh, you try to grab her, you try to push your other self away. Um, but your hands move through their bodies as if you were immaterial, as if you couldn't catch anything more at all. You couldn't touch anyone. You couldn't draw their attention to you. Um, the crowd moves around them and they disappear from your side. The smoke closes around you, clouding your vision, clouding your memories. You have these memories of faces and you don't remember what else you've seen. And then there's a glimpse of you, the other you somewhere. And again, nothing. The emptiness. You don't even know if you found anybody. You don't even know if there was someone you looked for. The clouds are of smoke are pouring inside of you, inside your mind, obscuring everything until all you're left with is this black swirling emptiness. You wake up feeling this emptiness. Inside you, you can feel the ground slightly shaking. I, I wake up with, with a sort of gasping sob and glance around in desperation, looking looking around the room I'm in. Um, you do see an older woman lying near you and there is some feeling of familiarity and then there isn't and then there is um, I get to my feet looking around the room and then heading into the uh, heading out the door and coming into this living space corridor so you- uh, looking around in sort of confusion <laughs> So as you inspect the, the space around you, the flat, it's um, it's definitely a flat. It looks like someone moved in maybe recently. There aren't many things in here. Um, but it is quite a nice space. There are two bicycles in the corridor. And there's the, the, the floor was shaking, you said? It was, yes. And as you're moving... It kind of stops and then shakes a little bit more and you hear the bombs falling outside. There's this part of me that wants to flee, this part of me that wants to run. But as I sort of take that first step, there's this sudden feeling of fear, like nowhere is safe. Like even if I were to run, where would I go? Um... And there's a vague flash of pale eyes in the darkness, but the thought is gone before I even um, really comprehend it. Um, And eventually I just curl down in in the doorway between the bedroom and the hallway. And just wrap wrap my arms around my knees and just start crying because I I don't know what to do and I don't know where to go and I don't feel safe and I'm confused. And you're sitting there crying, confused, and the ground shakes occasionally. And sometimes you feel like some memories are almost coming back to you and then they fade again. Um, and then... You feel, you can smell 
smoke and fire in the air and then is gone. I think sort of each time I'm just about, I feel like I'm almost finished crying. Things shift and change and I'm confused and lost again. And the process just starts up once more. And eventually you hear a voice. Bea? Bea, my dear. I almost don't react to the name at first, not recognizing it as mine, but, and almost not hearing it over the sound of the bombs. And then I eventually sort of realized that someone's talking and I look up with my face just coated in bloody tears. Oh, oh yeah, darling. And you see the face of Felicia looking with concern. Oh, is that happening again? You must be so frightened. Let me help you. And she reaches towards you very slowly. Is that all right? Is that all right? One moment while I check if that's all right. And yeah, I've got two successes. So I think I think I actually cling to um, the like a, the sleeve of her nightdress um, and try and stay as close to her as I can, desperate for something to ground myself with. And she strokes your hair very gently, just whispering, it's going to be okay, you've been through this before. I know it's horrible right now, but these things don't last. And I'm here with you. I will take care of you. I will make sure you're okay. Um, and, And you do start feeling calmer, like this fear and panic feeling you is gone. The things you were seeing, the, the sensation that the ground is shaking sometimes doesn't disappear entirely, but it becomes more muted and you're not so scared of it right now. You can think more clearly. And so I think I just lean back with my head slightly resting against her shoulder, sort of staring into the middle distance in this numb haze um, with the drying tears on my face, not really, not almost not aware of them. It's going to be all right. You will feel better. I, I know those things. <sighs> I know you suffer from these horrible, horrible dreams. I'm just sort of slowly nodding as she talks. You've been doing so good and you will be doing good again. This is just temporary, my dear. Thank you. I'm here to take care of you. You don't have to worry. Do you want to stay here tonight? I'll take care of you. I'll make sure you're okay. Thank you. And I think I just sort of curl myself in closer to her. And she's hugging you. You can stay here. You can stay right here. Do you want me to let your friend know you're staying here? Yes, I, I say, almost not really remembering who who those people come, would be. Come with me, and she kind of she doesn't leave you. She she mm -hmm. helps you stand up, and leads you towards the phone. And you are now kind of calmer, so you can think more clearly. You, mm -hmm. It's up to you to decide how much Bea remembers. Uh, I think it's still very hazy. Um, and uh, as, as Felicia says, your friends, it kind of prompts the beginning of a memory. But before that, I, 
I, I almost hadn't thought to think of them. Um, and I'm now trying to remember names. I think I'm getting sort of vague um, appearance and feelings rather than names. But I can start picturing a few faces. Um, and you see Felicia um, look at some uh, notes on the table where the phone is and dial a number. Um, and then she's on the phone just saying, hello, yes, it's uh, Mrs. Peshko. Um, no, I just have a message from Miss Yanina Shivak. Um, please let her know that Miss Wojniak isn't feeling well. And she will be staying here with me. Oh, oh, she will know where it is. She, she knows how to find us if she wants to. Thank you. Thank you. You're so kind. Thank you very much. That will be all. Yes. And I think during this, I've just been sort of standing very close to her. Um, my hand sort of resting on her elbow. I'm not clinging to her quite as much as I was earlier, but I still, there's, this comfort from being close to her. It's all right. She won't worry now. She knows you're safe with me here. Thank you. And I give her a shaky smile. And she smiles back at you. I don't... I don't mean to be a burden. Um, but, but thank you. Oh, you're not a burden, my dear, not at all. I'm your mother. I'm here to take care of you. That's what mothers are for. And I lean into her again. And she hugs you. And I think I just spend some time standing in her embrace. Um, and there's that sort of creeping anxiety in the back of my head from touch but there's also this relief from it being her and there's this irritation at the at the anxiety want, wanting wanting it gone wanting to be able to fully appreciate this moment Can you stay with her like that for some time? Meanwhile, Yanina, uh, you're waiting for Bea. You're looking for your note that you made um, on your experiments. Um, yeah, they are. I mean, they are kind of messy, but they look fine to you. You obviously know. You understand what what it's about. You can make some new notes, write up your observations from last night. Yes. Uh, and there is knocking on the door. Come in. I probably, because I'm expecting like Bea, so I think I'm just like saying coming without like even going to yeah. the door and asking who it is and because I'm expecting Bea. <laughs> um, and the door kind of slightly opens and then you hear the voice. Miss Shivak, it's me. Uh, and you see the ghoul uh, from the reception standing there. Oh, come in. Oh, I just have the message. And he kind of steps in. I will invite him. Bows his head slightly. Um, Mrs. Felicia Peshko called. And I guess uh, there's like an wave on anxiety. <laughs> she wanted me to let you know that Miss Wozniak isn't feeling well and would be staying with her. Oh. I was told you know how to find them. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you very much that you came all the way here to tell me the message. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Of course. That's my job and I'm happy to be able to help. Very kind. Thank you. If you, if you would like to call, you of course know where to find me. Of course. I, I know. I 
as long as they are together. I'm sure that's fine. I might go visit her. Or we will see. Thank you so much again for relaying the message. I appreciate that. You're very yeah. welcome. And Have he gives another slight bow and... Um, I will bow back and just have a good evening. Uh, and he leaves. Having wished okay. you a good evening as well. Okay, so when he leaves, I just sit on a bed and just, like, think about they are not feeling well. I guess, as because it's very early, I don't think it's anything that happened I I think it is her nightmare, so that makes me a bit calmer because I know that she's with Felicia and uh, nothing like really horrible is happening happening to her. So I guess I might call them later, but I promised Abela that I would be here, so I don't want to go mm-hmm. all the way unless it's like an emergency. So I might probably call them later to figure out. What's wrong with Bea, but what makes me calmer is that it is so it is so early and that she's with Felicia, so I really don't worry as much. So what do you do? Okay, I guess in that case I will have to go feed my own and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Alright then. Well then you head out from Bottle Bristol. Yes. Uh, are you just going to look for a random person in the street? Yes, I will probably go just a bit enough far away from the hotel to be respectful of the hotel boundaries and then I will just try to find someone who is alone that I could like sneak on from behind. As you then know. roll your wits and alertness with difficulty seven. Uh, one success. One success. success. So you wander around a little bit, taking your time looking for someone. Um, and it it takes some time, but eventually you see um a young woman, maybe around twenty years old, um, looking, uh, walking through the ruins, uh, kind of digging through the snow. Uh, she looks like she might be trying to find something that haven't yet been scavenged uh, in one of the buildings. Uh, as you sort of look, you see that her clothes don't look to be in a particularly good condition. Uh, she's very thin. Okay. Hmm. Huh. I will probably... Not go for her because I feel that I could hurt her more. And since she's thin and doesn't look very good and it's cold, I don't want to make her less, less healthy by taking her blood. So I will not go for her. And I will keep looking, I guess, and stroll. I think by this point, I'm just strolling and occasionally look for someone. So you're just strolling, occasionally looking for someone. Uh, roll again with difficulty 8 with an alertness. Okay, I have 10 and 8. Two successes. So you're taking your time wandering around the city. Um, and... What are you thinking about as you're wondering about? Are you f- you're not really thinking about hunting that much, are you? No, no, I'm I'm not. I'm, the I think my main like thought about the hunting is that I don't want to make a mess, and I want, to, but not like about the hunting. It's oh, sorry, I have a cramp in my hand. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um. Okay, I'm just ready to get rid of the hand <laughs> right now. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I'm thinking probably about Bea and about also the Dominic, the thing that's gonna happen. And 
I really wish that it goes well and that we are able to save him. Because I can't imagine losing Dominic as well. Uh, and I guess by this point I also think about Mara because Dominic reminds me of her and he was from the same sires. There is probably some sadness in me when I go stroll and I'm probably like thinking about our times together and with Bea and Felicia when we lived alone. So I guess that's probably what I think about. When you think about Mara and her sire, that's also Dominic's sire, is there any feeling there about Abelard, any thoughts, anything? Well, I guess I... There were a time when you really wanted to tell him off. There was a time like that. Yes, I know. And it never happened. Yes, it never happened because I guess... By the time when I notice how he cares about Dominic and that he wants him back, I guess he also has his own. I guess I soften up on him because there is, you know, I realize that he's a person too and I don't know what exactly happened, how things went down with, between him and Mara, so. Uh, and with him and Dominic, I guess he's, he's, he, feel, he feels responsible for them. He wants to help. He's doing all he can to get Dominic back, so I can't hold grudge against him. I guess I just don't feel point in holding him, being angry at him for Mara because she's not there anymore. And that was not his fault. It was mine. (laughs) And hers. (laughs) And as you're wandering around with those thoughts, eventually you do see um, in one of the smaller streets uh, uh, between the ruined buildings, uh, you see a young man walking at Quite confidently, um, not like in a hurry, but fairly brisk pace. Um, you see that he's carrying, um, a bottle of vodka, but he's not drinking from it. He kind of has it just in his hand as if he's walking with it somewhere. Okay. Is he coming towards me or like in front of me? Yeah, he's coming towards you. Okay, in that case, I will like slow down and I will let him pass me and then I will turn around and sneak behind him. Yeah, you can do that. Just roll me your... You want to sneak up on him, basically. Yes. So roll your dex, celerity and stealth. Difficulty six. Uh, I have four, one, two, four successes. Yeah, no problem. He doesn't even notice you. You grab mm. him and you, like, you very, moving very quickly, very, uh, gracefully remove some of his scar from his neck and bite. And you feel the taste of blood in your mouth. And again, it's, it's the same feeling of wanting to lose yourself in it. You feel again your body calling for Vita to heal itself. Yeah, feel well, how many do I have to so I could like get rid of one of the aggravated? Uh, that will be five blood points for oh, one man. aggravated no. damage. Okay, then uh, I don't want to do that. But uh, how much do you want to drink from him? Just the usual amount. I want to be safe, so just two. Yeah. And how much blood do you have right now? Six. Is it six. Okay, you're all right then. Um, you feel like you are in control, just. Okay, I will have to find someone else tonight again, but not right now, to be able to heal. In that case, I will, I will drink the two, and then I will leave him somewhere near the wall, so he wasn't just in the middle of the street. 
Yeah, you leave him there, and he's regaining consciousness uh, fairly. Quickly. I just pretend that I'm just walking by. I just put him there that before he regains fully his consciousness. You hear him just go like, oh, fuck, what the fuck? Uh, but then he's, you're pretty sure he's going to be fine, and you move away. And what do you do next? Uh, I guess I will slowly head back to the hotel. Because I went to see Hannah yesterday and I don't want to go there again in case Abelard might need me. So I will probably go back to the hotel without really having any plans. So you start heading back towards the hotel. Bea. (coughs) In the meantime, you are with your sire. She's calming you down, holding you close. Don't worry, my dear. It will pass. Are you all right staying in here? Yes, mother. It's easier now. The the bombs are dimmer now. Um. Oh, I, well, I, I help any way I can. Thank you. And I give her this sort of adoring mm-hmm. smile. And she smiles back at you. Is there anything you need? Are you hungry? And I'm, I'm just enjoying your company. Oh, and I'm enjoying yours. It's good to have you here, although I'm I'm sorry you think like that. That's You're going through so much, my dear. I I really wish I could help you more with this. Thank you, mother. And I struggle to think as to what she's referring to, but it, I ultimately decide that it doesn't really matter. And I just kind of let her words wash over me. And she keeps talking like that, just reassuring you. Um, and I think some of your memories would slowly return, the ones that you think they are would regain. Mm-hmm. Yanina's face um, and Eventually her name, or I think, is one of the first things to come back. Um, there's a couple of other faces of um, kindred from Elysium. There's Rahela, there's Antonio, Cornelia, um, probably uh, others that I'm failing to remember <laughs> the top going of my head. to say there is ventral primogen there it's the ventral primogen yes and there is a face of a priest there that fills you with fear I think I, I sort of focus on it for a second and then sort of recoil from that thought not, not quite understanding what's happening there um and I focus back on the faces that feel warmer, less frightening. You do, and you... Some vague memories of these people will return to you. Uh, as Felicia keeps being with you, stroking your hair. Oh, humming a tune at some point. Singing a lullaby. And I think for the most part, I sort of allow myself to drift and anchor myself to her. Um, she is, she is everything that I need in this moment. Um, And as as frightening as everything around me outside of outside of this room is, she is she is 
what keeps me safe. Although there, there's this slight feeling of anxiety under it, but I can't place it quite at the moment. Um, and I shrug it off. Oh. And you focus on her and stay with her like that. Meanwhile, Yanina, you are back at Hotel Bristol. Where do you head? Oh, I guess. I don't really have any plans, so... Hmm, I guess I will check the museum if there's like someone I could socialize with that I like. And if not, then I will go back to my room and I guess I will just have a quiet, chill night in. So you head to the Elysium. And there are more people there now. You see... Mihail Orwolf is there, not the person you want to socialize with necessarily, mm. but he's usually okay. there. Yeah. Uh, and Stefania and Nina and Rahela are sitting near him. Um, you also see Conrad, the Toreador you brought to Hotel Bristol together with the Tremere, is sitting near them. Uh, looking kind of uncomfortable and not even hiding it, but sitting with his clan. Um, you see, Antoni is there, um, talking to Joachim, the Tremere, and you see Daniel sitting there, um, okay. looking towards Conrad, uh, kind of almost staring. Uh, when you enter, but then he sort of looks to the door and notices you and smiles I was a little. Back at him and go towards him. And if I manage while, while I'm looking around, if I catch Anthony and Joachim, then I will also smile and nod at them. Uh, Anthony, like, nods, gives you a nod, Joachim gives you a nod and a smile. And Daniel is just sitting in a chair, leaning like against it and against the wall behind it, um, and kind of waves. Hi. Hi. I will sit next to him in a very similar relaxed pose. <laughs> I was hoping you would show up. Oh, yeah. You know me, there's not much to do, usually. Ah. I have a free night, I guess. Well, why don't... I'm not going to say it. I, I don't want to be mean, really. I, I'm i glad you're safe. I'm glad you're doing okay. How are you? Do you want to go to our room? <sighs> or you enjoy the view know. and I look at, <laughs> at him at, and you him. <laughs> oh, he's looking at Conrad. Oh, Conrad, sorry. Yeah. sorry, yeah, that one. I, well, I, I actually, well, I've been meaning to speak to, and he sort of gestures to Antoni with his head. Oh. In a bit, he, he left me a message. Oh, he's back on duty. Well, I wonder if I am. Oh, well, you see. So you're here waiting to speak to him. Yeah, and hoping to catch you. Hmm, I'm here. That you are. Where's Bea? How is she? Ah, well, she is at our haven with Felicia. And I just got the message from Ma- Marius, is the name of the yeah. group. From Marius that... Felicia called that Bea isn't feeling well. I guess she had a nightmare again, so... Well, I'm glad that she's with Felicia, so I guess she's not coming back tonight. Oh, well then, I guess she didn't get to speak to Zoya. Ah, from what I... I spoke with Bea yesterday, and I don't think she mentioned it, so I guess she didn't, because she went to see... The primogen, or the ventral primogen. If she's done well, she's done well. Nothing to be done about that. Sorry. 
It's all right. Do you have any news? Um, let me think. I, well, told Zoya I was coming along. She was pissed, but she'll have me. Oh, I'm sorry. And Isidore is even more pissed and kind of watching my back to see if he won't stake me for the time being. <laughs> that would be best friend behavior, wouldn't it? Funny you should say that. So he kind of gives you a look. <laughs> I wouldn't. No, I know you wouldn't. I wouldn't really. I know. Unless you really leave me no choice. Yeah. <sighs> well, I guess it's happening. Any news about that? Well, I was stalling, saying we need you need time to heal up. How's that coming along? Ah. Uh. Well, I wanted to heal. I was just feeding, but I couldn't. It would leave me unwell, and I can't risk it when I'm alone. Do you need help with that? Well, if you have time, when, and you want to spend some quality sire child time with me tonight, then, of course, I would be grateful. I, yeah, I think that would be for the best. Unless you get busy with the man of duty there, and I will glance towards Anthony. <laughs> and Anthony, you know, well, he, he doesn't actually look towards you. He seems to be fairly focused on his conversation with you or him. And so it's like, yeah, well, let's give it a moment, right? Of course, I I honestly don't have any plans tonight. I'm just hanging out on the, around the hotels. I'm free all night, I guess. Unless something happens and I need it. Unless something happens. And he just looks his usual dispirited self as he says that. I pinch oh. his cheek. Oh. <laughs> And um, you sit with him for a moment, and then Antoni um, comes up and says to Daniel, well, she says, good evening, is she back? Good evening, Antoni, glad to see you back on duty. And he looks to Daniel, Mr. Bartosz, may we talk? I'll be brief. And Daniel just kind of, he, he still keeps leaning against the wall for a moment and then straightens and stands up. All right, then. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to go somewhere? I was like, oh, that won't be necessary. Um, and he just kind of, I mean, they, they sort of stand up and take a few steps away, but not even they don't necessarily even step out of earshot, just kind of don't want to be talking over you sitting right next to them. Yeah, of course. I I just look I guess I look at Joachim if he's still there and glance towards him. Are you snooping on the conversation Daniel is having mm, with Antone? Probably yes. <laughs> a bit. Um, but like pretending like I'm not <laughs> Are you using your your Rospex? Uh let's let's try without it. If they are just a few steps from me. I I can uh, hear Oh, sorry. No, yeah, okay. I yeah. I wasn't sure if it was me. <laughs> no, no, my my mic. Um Yeah, roll me with difficulty 8 and also tell me if you have any sevens. Okay. Uh what should I Oh, uh, perception <laughs> and alertness, sorry. Okay. Perception, alertness. Okay. Uh, I have seven, nine, 
nine, ten. Seven, nine, ten. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, they're, they're not really stepping away that far. They, it's not a private conversation, you know, they would have gone somewhere else for that. Um, and you hear Antoni ask, I will keep this simple. I know you were working with my colleague, who was very pleased with your assistance and performance. And I wanted to ask if that's still something we can count on. And Daniel, you see, he's kind of looking at the floor and then looking at the ceiling and looking <laughs> everywhere except at Antoni for a moment. <sighs> And then just says, you know, I was forced into what I was doing. Um, and Antoni says, I am not forcing, I'm asking. We could use your help and would be grateful if you were willing to extend it. Antoni gives a slight smile. Certainly would be a better use of your time and skills than certain misguided escapade I heard you were trying to avoid. Um, At this point, Daniel kind of glances to you. And I will, like... I will try not to, like, chuckle. (laughs) Um, And then looks back to Antoni and says, I, well, you really are back on duty. Uh, Antoni just says, it's hardly a secret. Um, And then says, of course, if you're willing to throw yourself into that, I won't interfere. I just wanted to know, can I count on your help in this coming night? <sighs> Daniel glances at you again. I was um, shrug. About perception and empathy. Difficulty uh, six. I... Okay, then I have two nines and six, so three success. Nine and six. Okay, uh, so it's actually a roll off. So roll once again. Oh no. <laughs> uh, uh, this is not good. I have one oh. seven. <laughs> okay, so you have one success. So he also rolls terribly right now. So you actually do see that he looks to you and there is guilt again and this concern. And then he looks to Antonia and says, can I think about it for a moment? Antonia says, of course. Uh, and at this moment, you start hearing, hearing footsteps coming, quite fast footsteps coming from outside, heading in the direction of the Elysium. I quite guess gentle, I uh, yeah. but quite fast. Okay, I will pick my interest and watch the door eagerly. <laughs> So you watch the door eagerly, and you see uh, the sheriff of the city, Lucian Topolsky, step in. Pause for a moment. Um, You see that he's, um, as always, impeccably dressed in a great gray suit with... um, No, this time not wearing a hat with a um, also grey, perfectly matched shirt. And he pauses for a moment and looks around the room and looks towards Mihail and then moves almost quicker than you can perceive. He's right at where Mihail is and he grabs him by the neck and pushes him against the wall. I feel I, I'm thinking ooh drama <laughs> are you actually thinking that well I guess I'm like confused but there's like part of me that enjoys seeing Mikhail like this 
<laughs> um, if it was someone else, I would be like more distraught. And, but because it's Mikhail, I think it's all right. it's more like it. There is some pleasure in seeing him being treated like that. <laughs> okay, all right. So, so you focus on your enmity with yeah. Mikhail uh, and the vindictive part that mm-hmm. enjoys saying this. Um, and Lucian is just, you know, he put, grabs him off the chair, which he, against the wall is just holding him there, looking Mihail straight in the eyes and just says, what is your child doing to my child? Primogen, saying the last word as if he was spitting in his face. Ah. Uh, and you see Mihail smile. Smile quite broadly. Um, and there is a hint of something mean in the smile. But if you're interested, you can roll perception and empathy yes, if you want to know interested. more about either of them. Or you can look into their auras because you have that ah, ability. Yeah, that's, that's, that's probably something I could do. So what do I have to roll? Do you want to roll into aura? Yes. Yeah. Um, Mihaius. Yes. Uh, you roll perception and empathy with difficulty eight. Okay. Get that gossip in here. Yeah? Ooh, I have two nines. You have two nines. So you do see that Mihail, the main emotion in him is that he's pleased. Um. The weird man. And. <laughs> He replies, well, I don't know the details. It wouldn't be polite to ask. And Lucian, like, doesn't let go. Doesn't move, just keeps staring. You know very well what I'm talking about. And Mihail continues smiling, and you continue to see the satisfaction in his aura. Ah. Uh, Sorry, other drama. And you do notice that, like, Antony is kind of pulling up Daniel, and they are starting to move towards uh, that scene. <laughs> um, and Mihail with a smile says, Why are you so angry about this? Do you begrudge your child the happiness you once had? And you see that Lucian was motionless, but he shakes. And you see his other hand, like, just forming a fist. Ooh. <laughs> and Bell misses all the best stuff. <laughs> um, standing there for a moment. And, you know, every, you know, everyone is staring at this point, and everyone is just... Yeah. Um, and Antoni comes up, kind of rushing there, putting a hand on Sheriff's shoulder. Lucian. Lucian. And at that, the Sheriff lets go of Mihail, who kind of drops a bit. And you see Daniel kind of standing by with Antoni, then exchanging glances. Um, and then Antoni kind of looks around the room, looks to um, turns sheriff towards him, looks at him, get a hold of yourself, come on, uh, and starts leading him outside of the room. And you see Mihail kind of straightens his black suit jacket, um, readjusts the pocket square, and sits back down. Um, to, and Stefania kind of leans to him, saying, are, are you all right? Um, and he kind of has a bit of a smile. Thank you. I am quite well. I 
He kind of shakes his head. I know he's been dealing with a lot of emotions lately. And he says it in a way that you can hear it, but not necessarily quite loud. And then he sits down. I'm sure he'll be back to his old self soon. Talking to Stefania. Well, and she still seems kind of worried. Uh, but you see in his aura that he's happy and satisfied. I guess at this point I probably exchange glances with Daniel. <laughs> Daniel looks towards you. Um, and kind of looks at the door. I will get up and leave the door, glancing at Mikhail one, one last time before I leave the door. Um, and Mikhail is just talking to Stefania now, and uh, you hear him make another comment about uh, being worried about Mr. Topolsky. <laughs> Uh, and you leave. Uh, meanwhile, Bea. Uh, blissfully unaware. <laughs> blissfully unaware. You are with your sire. Um, is there anything you wish to do? Is there anything that draws your attention? There is, again, at some point, a bit more of this feeling of fire coming closer. I think I try to distract myself um, if we happen to have any of the books of poetry or anything. Um, just staying close to Felicia and burying my head into a book. <laughs> um, but so Felicia is reading to you and having you read to her. Uh, and she brings out very calm poetry focused on landscapes, uh, the mountains. And the beauty of the Polish part of Carpathians. And it's very calming, uh, full of wonder at the beauty of nature. And as you are clinging to Felicia, and she's reading to you, um, roll your perception in a cult with difficulty eight. Uh, three successes. Three successes. So you are in this calm moment with your sire. Um, you know there's danger everywhere and nowhere is safe, but you feel safer here. And there is this warmth and almost light as you look at Felicia and her face appears almost angelic. Uh, glowing with this celestial light as she reaches towards you and her words wrap around you in this calm, soothing way. And then you see uh, again Something starts swirling in her head, and you see the thoughts moving around her body. The emotions turn darker and darker, and they circle around the light, eventually uh, making it go out slowly and slowly as they pull her further into dark. It's not entirely gone the thoughts are turning more and more towards darkness. And the words that you're speaking, the soothingness in them turns sharper, still pulling you closer, still enveloping you, but the touch is more hurtful. Ah, and you start seeing a bit of shadows around her hands and fingers as she's holding the book. Uh, a shadows around her words as they wrap themselves around you, soothing you. And then it's gone. And it's just Felicia. I think during this vision, I sort of 
straightened and this sort of tension. And as as the vision fades, I, I sort of clutch at one of her hands. Are you all right, my dear? There, there was there was something pulling you into the darkness. To the darkness. Oh, my I, dear, you. I don't want you to go. Well, I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying here with you. You're here with me. You don't have to worry. Well, perception and empathy, but I would say with difficulty seven because of the state you're in. That's fair. <laughs> seeing weird stuff, I'm decent yeah. at. Seeing seeing stuff that's actually in front of me, not so much. Not so much. I'm struggling to read my dice in the slicing. <laughs> um... A whole one success. You don't really see much in her face except concern for you and the reassuring smile. Now slowly sort of settle down, but quietly murmuring, please don't go to the darkness. I, I won't. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, and she's sitting there with you. Oh. Reassuring you she's not going to go, she's not going to leave you. That you are here safe with her and you will be safe until you feel better. Meanwhile, Yanina, you head out of the Elysium with Daniel, who just kind of moves to leave the hotel. (laughs) Yeah, I think as, as long as we are, as soon as we are outside, I go, wow, <laughs> it was something. <sighs> Fucking problem was what that was. Don't know exactly what kind of problem, but it's not good. It's fucking not good. Yeah, I I think Mikhail was pleased and happy about all of this. He's, he's so weird. You know what? Fuck him. And fuck the both of them. And whatever to the other drama is going on. I I met with <sighs> Diana earlier and she seemed... Oh, I don't know. There's some, something's wrong, but I haven't been able Yeah, obviously. To. The sheriff nearly punched one of the primogen for whatever was going on, so... And it's not even the sheriff of our clan. Yeah, I... I, I mean, I say it's a really drama, but I get the feeling it's... It's a problem. I think Lucian cares about his child, just as you care about me. So I guess something must be happening with Diana. And Anna Maria. That worries him. I don't know. Why not? That is kind of thinking for a moment and then on shrugs. Yeah, I don't have a clue. Ah, well, yeah, I guess it's not life and death situation, so. <laughs> He he looks like he wants to say something more, but then he kind of... Uh, I guess the more time I spend in there, the more I become like one of them. I was about to tell you it's a problem if, you know... You, you'd want Camarilla to be collected and on one side. Huh, but I guess there are still people... And there are still some feelings, I guess. Especially with... I mean... Except Mikhail, I had always had good... Good experience with the Torridors, so I don't know. Uh. And, you know, Luciana is going through a lot because 
the man he loves is missing and I guess yeah. that would make every anyone on the edge. Oh wow. Um Yeah. Actually Yanina, why not? Roll your intelligence and politics with difficulty nine. Do I have I don't have any politics, so no, it's just you don't. <laughs> <laughs> At least I have the intelligence. But since I'm on penalty Well, I have what was the difficulty? Nine. Okay, then nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Uh, so you, yeah, you don't have a clue. It's just you know, you have your thoughts that you basically had. Um, Daniel kind of looks to you and yeah, I, I have a feeling a lot of it is there's some purpose to what Mihail is doing. Huh? I guess so. If I, I and really not. Don't know. Just drama. But I don't know what it is. Well, that man is is clearly something. I I'm not sure if you were there the other night where he played the melody that Bruno used to play. When the prince was there, so I guess it was a show for the prince, but I'm not sure. Honestly, I don't care about Mikhail enough to wonder about his motives, but I don't like when he hurts people that I do care about, which is... Perception and empathy. Uh, and I have six and ten, so just six. Oh, okay. No, you don't see anything more. So Daniel's kind of thinking about something for a moment, and then looks to you. Right. Well, weren't you going to hunt so that you can heal? Yes, that's that was the plan. So let's go. Let's go. Let's have a look for. Someone you can feed them. Um, and just to do it sort of quicker, Yanina, you're looking for another time this night. So roll your wits and alertness with difficulty nine. Okay. Um, and I'm going to roll for Daniel and we'll see how well your thing goes. I'm not going to two, make you play two nines. all of that. You have two nines. Yeah. Um, I got confused in his stats there for a moment. Um, one more. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, you actually. Um. What I'm going to say is, you're you're doing pretty well, and between the two of you being on the lookout and working together, um, you can if you dedicate. Like quite a sizable portion of the night to it, find two people to drink from and feed. Okay. Yes. Which would give you, if you drink only two, four blood points. Mm-hmm. Um, they would be, um, uh, w- uh, they would be one man walking back from work that you found in one of the abandoned streets and you can sneak up on him as you usually do. And you are fed, so you are in control. Okay, so Um, I will take two. Yeah, and then um, later on you would find first a group of friends, it's uh, three young teenagers, like teenagers, not necessarily young as teenagers, but young men, um, Walking back kind of um, from somewhere, laughing, pushing each other a little bit. Um, And then one of them kind of waves and turns into one of the streets 
And you are able to follow him and sneak up on him as well. Okay. And Daniel is keeping walk, helping you make sure that no one notices you when you can drink from him as well. Okay, and I will, as again, take the safe amount. That's two blood points. Yes. Another that you get. Yay, so I'm on 12, so I can heal one aggravated damage. Um, you said five blood points? Five, yes. So I'm back on seven, but at least mm. I'm, I'm only hurt now. Yeah. So you focus, after you fed and you went like further away from that place, you focus yourself on your body and you let it mend. And you feel like how much of you, how much of Vita in you this is using. You feel this wound not being like a normal wound. Um, closing. And you feel better and the pain and the discomfort is not entirely gone. But it lessens. And you would have spent several hours on all of this. The strolls. Uh, where will you want to head next? Yes, I would just stroll with Daniel for a bit around the hotel. I guess I would yeah. go closer to the hotel so it didn't take yeah. too long in case, you know, I want to check back with Elysium in case... You know, Abelard needed me. But I will probably just stroll back towards the hotel and ask Daniel if he wants to. If that I overheard his conversation with Anthony and was asking him if he's going to take the offer to work with them. He hesitates for a moment and then says, I think so. I think with whatever the hell's going on with whatever Mirai was doing, we and I hate myself for saying this, but we're not going to survive without the Camarilla. Ooh. Let's not Zoya hear this. <sighs> Zoya heard me and Isidore say that. And she knows it. She hates it with every fiber of her being. But she knows it. That's why she hates them all so much. Well, not only, but it makes it worse. Well, I guess we are stronger together right now. So. And yeah. An Anthony is a good man. I'm sure he's not going to make you do anything stupid. Depends how you define it. Ah, stuff that I would make you do. <laughs> no, I don't think I can be worried about that from him. <sighs> He's a good man. I... Well, I he have me. my doubts about that. He's... He's fine, I suppose. I wouldn't go too crazy on the word good. Well, I, he, he helped me a lot and he didn't have to and I saw that he was really hurt by my actions. So I think there is a lot of good in him, a lot of pain, guilt. He's decent for a Camarilla hound. Oh, I don't know many of them, many of them, so I judge people for who they are, not the job they are doing. He gives you kind of a long look, but again, you you can't quite read it. I just hope we'll manage to keep you safe. <laughs> and he kind of wraps his arm around you. And you do you just spend the night strolling with him and kind of chatting? I guess, I guess yes, and but like not the whole night because I want to still have time to get back to the Elysium in, oh, yeah. and just check. And I guess on the way on the hotel, I will probably call Bell when we get back in the hotel. All right, so you head back towards the hotel. Um, and Bell, you are 
um, you are with Felicia. With Felicia, you retire. Are you okay to have the conversation with you, Nina, very quickly so that we can wrap up this night? Yep. So, Yanina, when you return, you call Bea, and Bea, yes. you've been with your sire, asking her not to go into the darkness. You calm down eventually after mm-hmm. some time. Time is shaky. Sometimes there is smoke that starts filling the room. Sometimes the whole building rumbles as if it was to collapse. And then it's gone. And then you hear someone screaming outside. And then. It's gone again. And then you look at your sire and her face. The features blend and disappear for a moment as if you couldn't perceive them. But then that's gone. Uh, And the phone rings. I think I turn and look at it for a moment, not quite believing that it's actually ringing. Um, And and it's not until Felizia reacts to it that I suddenly connect. (laughs) Um... Felicia reacts to it. Hello? Hi, Felicia. It's me, Janina. I'm checking out, checking up on Bear. Oh, oh, Janina. Is she so okay to hear from you? Hi. Is she it's... okay to talk? Bear, my dear, do you want to speak to Janina? Oh, and she hands you the phone. Janina? Hi, honey. How are you doing? Um... It's shaky. How are you? I'm I'm all right. I was with Daniel most of the night. I was feeding and help heal my wound, one of my wounds. So I feel better, but I worry about you. I'm glad you're feeling better. Did you have a nightmare again? Yes, it's it's leaked into my waking hours again. Oh no. I'm I'm so sorry. Do you want me to visit you tomorrow? Maybe. Um, is if that's not if that's not too much trouble. I if there's not going to be any emergency, then I will stop by. I will probably call if I do. Okay. Take care of yourself and. Love you so much. I love you too. Take care. Have a good sleep. You too. And I will hang out, hang up, and leave to my room. Oh, and you go to your room and because I you were... probably I will check the Elysium first in case like there was something happening. If not. Um, there isn't Word really much happening. Um, you see, neither I, Mihail nor Lucian are there at okay. the moment. I probably like check if Abelard was there in case, like, no, if not, not there. then I'm gonna go back to my room. Just um, go right so, there. Yes. Um, and you go lie in your room. And what are you thinking about? Uh, before you fall asleep, you would have noticed that as you were saying goodbye to Daniel as you talked about Camarilla, he went kind of a bit quiet, like he was struggling with something, but you couldn't really read much into yeah. him. Uh, I, I think I was thinking about, well, right now I guess Bea, because I was just talking to her, so I worry about her, so that's what my thoughts mainly was and then probably about what happened in Elysium and about hoping that Daniel is going to be okay helping Anton and then I probably thought about Nastya and did I miss her and with that you fall asleep uh, and you there. You spoke to Yanina, who said she might visit the next night. And there's a feeling of warmth from talking to her. And 
would appreciate her company. Um, I think the thought somewhat, well, after the next couple of shakes of the building and sounds of the bombs, I stop thinking about it after a little bit of time. Um, and I get ready to go to, to go to sleep for the day with Felicia that I both feel the need to cling to and feel like I have to be close to her and I also feel so far away from her and like she's slipping through my fingers and she's by your side stroking your hair uh, talking to you reassuring you that everything will pass and sometimes you get this impression of her words being hurtful of her words turning dark. But then it's gone. And then it fades from your memory. And eventually, in a shaking building with the sounds of bombs and the smoke so thick it clouds your memories, you fall asleep as the sun rises over so, thank you both so much thank for playing. you and thank you to everyone who's been watching we hope you enjoyed this episode uh, we will be back next week actually because we had some change in schedules uh, so hope you will be able to join us uh, on uh, I think it's the 7th uh, of yes the 7th of March 6.30pm GMT here on the Lamias channel we hope to see you here again with us to continue the story of Ba and Yanina. Um, thank you all so much and good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Bye bye. Are we offline? Are we not offline? Uh, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> well, since if we're not offline, then I'm going to just keep talking and talking. <laughs> and, um, and this is going to be very strange. <laughs> Here yeah. it goes. Yay! <laughs>